Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm very happy to um, introduce Johannes Schrumpf today. Johannes Schrumpf is from the uh, University of Osnabrück, and he will talk about uh, Siddhartha, which is uh, not the novel, obviously, but an integrated study assistant software for individualized learning. So um, now it's you, uh, Mr. Schrumpf. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for you, so you can see my presentation. Okay, let's see. Ah, yeah. All right, here we go. Okay, um, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Johannes. Um, I'm here for you to talk about Cydata, uh, which is an integrated study assistance software that we have been developing uh, in our nicely named... Uh, project uh, which, which has the same name as data as well. Um, that this was a project between um, three universities and one research institution, uh, namely the University of Osnabrück, where I'm situated, the uh, Leibniz University of Hanover, uh, the University of Bremen, and the um, His HE, which is the um, institution for um, academia development, basically, or Institute für Hochschulentwicklung on, in German. Um, the project was funded by the BMBF um, and the funding line um, innovation potential in the um, in academic uh, lecturing, basically. And um, this is what we've come up with. And um, just as a small heads up, if you have questions in between, just post them in the chat. I will try to answer them right away. And um, yeah, I think we will just start. Okay. So this is the agenda for my small presentation for you. Um, in the beginning, what is Cydata? Um, what is the general idea behind it? And how was this idea then translated into software? Um, then I'm going to give you some example features, um, just two features that we've been working on in the last uh, 12 months um, that try to improve um, the existing software that we have rolled out last year. Um, then a word to data ethics and data protection regulations that we try to follow. Um, and then we will have a small live session, depending on how much time I will take um, uh, yeah, to explain everything or to show you um, what we've been working on. Um, I will post some credentials into the chat and then you can test the system for yourself if you like. And in the end, I have collected some um, yeah, interesting questions maybe for us to discuss. But um, if you have other questions or if you want to discuss a different topic, then feel free to do so um, as well. Okay, so what is Cydata? Um, Cydata, this is the symbol in the, in the middle, um, is basically a study assistance engine or software or platform that is trying to collect um, data from um, internal and external resources internal meaning that they come from the university that the system is running on basically or integrated in and external meaning um, educational resources but also other resources from platforms that are not um, integrated into the university um, at the moment this can be um, for example courses from other universities or this can be also some other external resources, for example, open educational resource repositories or um, massive open online courses. And um, with this data, Cydata tries to um, help students to find their own personal um, educational goals. So what they want to achieve with their studies, not only in the scope of um, following their degree, because this is usually covered by the university that students are um, yeah, um, being taught in, but also um, their interests beyond their regular um, study path. So um, an example for this would be um, if students want to um, participate in a, in a semester abroad, which is not mandatory for them, and they just don't know how to apply for that. Um, one survey that we did found that um, many students were in principle interested in participating in a semester abroad, but they felt like they were, they, um, they, um, or it was just too much organizational work for them 
to really organize this for themselves. And um, so this was, for example, one of our goals to make this easier for the students so that they can um, yeah, participate in a semester abroad more easily. Mm, and that Cydata basically then collects information about where um, critical information is located within the, uh, within the university. And this then provides this information to the student so that the student um, yeah, has a checklist of what to do before, to, before going abroad. Um, okay, so it's um, data-driven in some kind of sense, but also feature-driven in the sense that um, it provides some services to this, for the student to follow their own individual learning paths. So this is the basic idea of Cydata. Um, and now comes um, yeah, basically how we, how we try to do this. Um, so if, you, uh, I mean, most of you will probably be familiar with um, existing dig digital infrastructure on university um, campuses. So on the one hand, we have the so-called LMS, which is the learning management system. In our case, this would, would be a stud IP, um, which is a learning management system used in uh, Northern Germany, I would say, um, maybe Lower Saxony, but also beyond that. Um, there, there are other learning management systems, which in principle could also be connected to Cydata as well. Um, and students are usually um, yeah, used to interacting with these learning management systems because in them they take le lectures, um, they do some homework assignments, stuff like that. Um, and so this uh, data plugin basically plugs into these learning management systems and then is flexible. So this is the, um, we, we call it front end in the development path, uh, or in the de development team. Uh, so this is basically what the student interacts with um, on the browser. And then we have the Cydata backend. This is where all the code is being processed and all, um, all the functions are being provided. And uh, this backend um, saves a lot of data, of course, um, from external repositories. Uh, so Open Educational Resources MOOCs, but it also saves um, data from the learning management system. So for example, courses or maybe other users. In the case that users want to be connected with other users, this uh, is also possible through Cydata. Um, then this backend also provides um, so-called recommendation modules. These are basically features that the student can use. So one of these features, for example, would be the um, abroad recommendation um, cascade, which uh, then gives the student information about what to do before going abroad. Another recommendation module could be um, how to connect with other students that have, have similar interests. Um, but these recommendation modules are basically encapsulated and they can be added or removed dynamically from the system. And so this makes Cydata very flexible and, and basically um, a good foundation for a platform to exchange ideas and um, information with. So what does it look like? Um, this is a screenshot from the SADAP um, test system that we have been testing the Cydata on. Um, so in the middle, you can see uh, different features that are being presented to the user. So in the beginning, we just have uh, information features, so how they can interact with the system, uh, what kind of features they can expect. Mm, on the left-hand side, there are, um, there's a listing of already activated recommendation modules. Whenever a student wants to um, get assistant in, assistance in some domain, they activate one of these recommendation modules. They can do this through um, clicking on one of the buttons here. Um, if I would scro scroll down on the screenshot now, there would be, um, for example, uh, a presentation of, hey, um, you can, uh, I don't know, you can, here is a feature that uh, guides you through um, your first uh, semester as a new student on the university, do you want to use this? And then the um, user clicks yes or no, and then it gets listed here on the left-hand side. And then the user can, um, yeah, get their information from these recommendation modules that have been activated. And in there, they get uh, different information or different features, depending on what this recommendation module tries to convey to the user. Um, if, this is a little bit, if this is a little bit much, don't worry. Um, I will send you some credentials in the end of the session so you can try the system for yourself. 
Um, I hope I have enough keys <laughs> for everyone. Okay, but this is uh, how the base, how the system basically looks like. It's um, integrated in the um, in the traditional uh, start IP uh, view. So students only need to do one click to get from their courses to the study assistant, and this makes it very um, flexible and low threshold for the for the users to use. So. Um, now I get to uh, two examples that we have selected um, to present to you today. Um, one is how to match resources to learners. And with resources, um, I mean educational resources. So um, everything that conveys some information in an educational um, frame, basically. So this can be courses, single events within a course, or um, for example, open educational resources or online courses or something like that. Um, okay, Philip asks, um, ah, okay, so um, on which um, level is Sedata connected with uh, the learning management system? Um, so it's basically connected just via a regular plugin. So um, um, SetIP provides the possibility to uh, install plugins, um, but also, um, for example, uh, Moogle provides this, and um, the data is only connected via a plugin, so um, not heavily integrated into existing lear learning management systems, but only via this plug-and-play approach, basically. I hope this answers your question. Uh, yeah, nice. <laughs> okay. Um, right, so the question was, um, how can we, um, can we provide um, educational material or edu educational resources to learners. And for this, uh, we have developed um, a natural language processing based, um, yeah, basically search engine, which um, collects information about um, all kinds of educational resources. If you have worked in the domain of educational resource tagging um, or meta information tagging for educational resources, you know that there's a whole a jungle of possible um, tagging systems out there. And so in the beginning of the project, we ask ourselves the question, okay, how can we unify this? Basically like, like every project out there tries to do. And instead of trying to come up with a new system, we uh, basically said, okay, what is the least common denominator between all education resources? Well, they have a title and a description. And so we used uh, natural language processing to um, classify these resources into different knowledge domains. And for this, uh, we use the Dewey Decimal Classification System. Um, if you're not familiar with this, this is um, a very general classification system for knowledge domains, which is, which is used in libraries. Um, if you go into a library and you um, take a look at one of the bookshelves, usually there's a number printed on it, like uh, 369.7 or something like that. And this is the Dewey Decimal Classification System, which uh, classifies books and other works into these knowledge domains. And um, we used this system and we collected uh, like uh, 2.5 million um, books and their titles. And then we trained a neural network on this. Um, if you're familiar with natural language processing, then you, sh you should be familiar with uh, Google BERT, which is a natural language processing neural network. And um, this can now take um, books or like uh, educational resources from 104 different languages and classify them into the, the Stewie Decimal Classification System. But it also can take uh, queries by students. For example, like if a student uh, um, says they are interested in post-growth economics, then this will also get routed through the natural language processing system. And then courses or other educational materials such as OER or MOOCs um, are being collected and then presented to the learner. And this way, um, the learner is connected with the resources that they are actually interested in. Um, this can, in principle, also be used to enhance the learning material course. Um, so, for example, if you have a course entered into the SUDAP system, um, Sadata so could, in theory, automatically uh, search for different open education resources or massive open online courses that are in the same knowledge domain and then present this to you as the teacher or um, present this as, a, um, as additional learning material for the learner. 
Uh, okay, sorry, pop-ups. <laughs> um, so this is this is one uh, highlight or this is one uh, feature that we've implemented uh, on the Sadata platform. Um, the other one is matching learners to learners, and this goes beyond um, the realms of the local campus. So um, learners can use Sadata to uh, basically create um, a profile of themselves, what they're interested in, maybe um, where they went during their semester abroad, then provide this to Sadata. And um, based on the interests and, and their description, Sadata matches you with other students with similar interests um, or just presents your um, ID card basically to other students and they, they can then decide if they want to message you. Um, so with this, we try to um, yeah, basically lower the borders between universities or make them somewhat um, less of an of a obstacle um, to connect learners with uh, different interests um, to collaborate in the future. So for example, if a student uh, would um, enter something like, I'm interested in robotics, but you don't have robotics at your local university, as something that is um, yeah, part of the curriculum or, or there is no working group on this, then Sadata can connect you with other students that are also interested in robotics um, at different universities. And then maybe you can collaborate in the future or um, um, try to persuade some professor to open up their courses um, so that you can also take them, even if you're not enrolled on this university. Yeah, so these are two example um, features that we have uh, been building in the last 12 months. Um, but we also have other features. Uh, so we, we also have um, psychometric uh, evaluation methods, basically, where people uh, fill in a survey and they then get tips on, on how to um, yeah, basically organize themselves better um, during their learning phases um, for, uh, for exams, for example. Um, based on um, yeah, psychological studies. All right, um, then maybe the last uh, part for data ethics and data protection. Um, data protection was a huge, um, I wouldn't say obstacle, but, a, but like a topic that we've been trying to um, tackle from the very beginning, because um, as a university project, we kind of have the, have this, um, role model function in society. And we wanted to be very strict with our data protection and data um, ethic rules. So um, we did this by, um, first of all, collecting mostly non-personal data on courses and educational resources that we try to um, process as much as possible so that no um, data from students or users um, needs to be processed as much. Then on the other hand, we tried uh, or we asked users for their explicit consent. Um, I mean, nowadays is, this is more or less a standard uh, with websites asking you to use cookies, but we um, always highlight what, what kind of data is being used in order to provide a service to the user so that the user then can decide themselves um, if they really want to use the service um, or if they don't want to share the data with um, the system. And this way, they have complete control over what kind of data they want to share with um, the system, basically. If users provide uh, person-relatable information, this could be, for example, an email address, um, or if they, if they enter their name on the, on the ID card of the um, connecting uh, learners to learners uh, feature, um, th then this is also a person-relatable uh, information then these information gets uh, anonymized, so they get thrown into an encryption um, algorithm, and so they're not stored in um, yeah, um, human-readable form on the back end. And um, uh, even if you uh, get somehow get access to the server, um, unless you have admin rights, you won't be able to read um, what kind of emails have been provided. Additionally, uh, we've been creating an online course on data ethics um, that is available for all universities that are connected to their data. Um, and this course is to be expanded in the future. So th this semester, there will be another one um, of these 
yeah, where, where students collaborate to enhance this data ethics course. And this data ethics course is about the philosophical um, foundation of uh, privacy, um, but also about concrete examples, um, how to, as, uh, as a novice um, internet user, basically, how to evaluate what is um, very, uh, or what kind of data is very private and what kind of data that I'm providing to some services is less private. And for this, we offer this course, and this course is available at all three universities at the moment and um, yeah, can be taken. All right, um, this is basically my main presentation part. I'm one minute behind, but um, I have um, provide or I can provide you with some um, yeah, login data so that you can test the system for yourself. I will post the data into the chat now. Okay. Okay, it's, uh, yeah, I have to close the presentation for that, sorry. So if you if you want to um, access the system, this is this is our testing system. So you can't really, oh no, <laughs> it's not formatted right. <laughs> uh, you can't break it. Um, okay, let me first post the link. This is uh, first come first serve. Uh, Philip asks, is the data ethics course open for guests as well? I think. It is. Uh, you just need the URL for it and you can visit it. Um, okay, so I will try to post uh, the login usernames one by one into the chat. Oops. Okay. I just do like this and you don't, don't need to watch the uh, rocket engines. Uh, and the password is testing, by the way. So um, you have to put in testing and then you can visit the Celeta plugin and interact with it if you want to. Uh, meanwhile, if I may, um, Carsten Lensing is asking whether um, teachers are going to have profiles too. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, so <laughs> this is actually actually a question that we talked about yesterday because um, initially we, we wanted to um, the system to create teacher profiles automatically, but then uh, this was a problem with uh, data regulation um, or data protection regulations. And so, uh, yes, um, teachers can also create a profile on Cydata, um, but they at the moment they can only use it to also search for different learners. Um, but um, other than that, teachers are just stored as um, a person giving a course in the data. So um, teachers don't have special functionalities avail available to them. Okay. I see Felix is in the, in the chat. Felix, if you want to, to uh, if you want to put, uh, paste more uh, account names, feel free. Okay. Yeah, it could be that uh, if two people take the same account now, um, they will get uh, some features activated by the other person, but don't let this distract you. Okay, these are all profiles and the password is testing. Again, sorry for interrupting. Um, Philip Sechtig is also asking for the URL of the um, data ethics course. If you might provide that, it uh, may come um, in handy. Okay, yeah, I can I can look it up. I, I don't have it at, uh, at hand at the moment, but uh, maybe at the end of the session, I can provide you with one. In principle, this is also um, activatable, or like you can you can see it if you log into the testing system and you activate the data ethics course, then there's a link to the website where you can 
where, can, where you can take a look at it. I'm not sure. Maybe you need um, SADAP credentials probably for that. So it's it's uh, maybe the course is not strictly open. It's just open for people who have uh, SADAP access on their local university. Um, and another question uh, comes. If I understand correctly, it is about the data, so about an orientation help in the theme and material journal for students, right? Also nicht um einen Lernassistenten, wenn sich die Noten der Studierenden verschlechtern und sie Unterstützung benötigen. Um, so whether it's just a recommendation engine or also like a personal, um, may I say, assistant? From what I understood, it's both, right? Like you also plan um, an implementation with a kind of psychological aspects of learning. Yes, um, that's right. So. Um... It's yeah. It's basically both. Um, it's it's a recommendation engine for um, specific interests, um, and at the same time, it's also a platform where where you can um, evaluate your own learning methods. Basically, mm. I mean this this also depends on what kind of modules are installed. Um, but we also uh, and I think uh, Felix is in the chat. Um, he developed a system where people uh, where students students can reflect upon their own goals, educational goals, and then divide them into sub goals, which can also help to structure your um, whole studies better. But the student assistant doesn't give you any information on what kind of um, specific aspects you need to train on to, I don't know, pass mathematics uh, or something like that. Okay, I see there's already discussion in the chat. I mean, I have some discussion uh, questions also posed here if you uh, like to engage in some discussion, but I think uh, we are already set and it's almost, uh, my time is almost over. Um, so if you have further comments or questions, uh, please just send them in the chat. And uh, if you want to leave for another talk, um, thank you for participating. It was great being here. Uh, and yeah, I hope to see you around on the festival. Um, we indeed have only two minutes left. Um, if I may say from, from a student's perspective, um, navigating the digital infrastructure of university can be a terrible pain, really. Uh, I think you will do so, so many people a huge favor um, with helping them out. I definitely see the, um, how this could save people in university, really. It's, it's a pain. There's always like different websites. You always have to look for everything and it's m mostly well hidden. So you have to ask people who already found it or you have to think like, oh, what did I Google back then um, to find this <laughs> or to find that on my university website? Um, to me, it sounds just great, really. Oh, thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, we, we have been always trying to improve our software and uh, yeah. Let's see what the students really uh, think about it. Uh, we've now um, entered the live phase, so we will get lots of feedbacks, hope hopefully. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> commentary. Uh, maybe one last question. How are my learning goals visualized in the platform? Ask Maria Kiru. Ah, okay. Um, so I think for this, uh, Felix is the best person to answer this question, but um, maybe I can also answer it. Um, they are um, visualized in a hierarchical fashion. So you enter um, a certain goal and this gets uh, visualized in a, um, in a tree-like tree structure and then you can formulate sub-goals from this. So um, for example, uh, the goal is past mathematics, then one sub-goal would be um, uh, yeah, hand in my homework uh, for this week or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe uh, you can also try it out uh, with the login credentials. There's a recommendation um, module which is called Learning Goals, Lernziele, I think. Um, and you, you can try it out, out for yourself. Okay, and so now that we are out of time, um, 
May I add that the chat engine on this um, platform we are on now also accepts like chat um, throughout the different events. Like um, you can always write people. You don't have to be in the same room. You don't have to um, be at the same event. You can um, always write. So may I say if anybody has more questions, feel free to write Johannes. Um, feel free to contact me also on the platform. Um, I have to say um, a thousand thanks for coming, um, Johannes. That was uh, really interesting. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending. Um, it was great, and I am closing the room now. Thanks. Thank everyone. you. Goodbye. Goodbye.